This video shows configuring and using the Back to You Android application. Back to You provide fee free GPS trackers using SMS control messages, and the Back to You Android app has additional features which I'll take you through. Right, this is the initial configuration screen showing the permissions. Obviously, it's going to need to read your SMS messages because it uses SMS, the location for the Back to You Tracker app, network comms for Google Maps, your account because that information if you're using the Back to You Tracker app will be required, phone calls just gets the SIMs um, and your locale and system tools basically wakes the, wakes the thing up. Uh, services that cost you money is sending SMS obviously you need to send SMS to the trackers. This is installing. The application is now installed. So I'll open it. And this is the initial configuration screen when you have no trackers configured. So um, basically showing you a tracker name so you can have multiple trackers, the phone number for each tracker, the password and the tracker type. So I'll just type in the test tracker and I'll use a simulated phone number for this video. And Default tracker passwords, all the SMS trackers usually come with that as a set of the default, so you need to be careful to change it. These are the tracker types, personal, vehicle, custom trackers which enable you to do your own thing, configuring commands, and the BackU app tracker which is the specific aimly enables you to track your phone if you've lost your phone. And you can track other, um, if you've got multiple Android devices, you can use that to track multiple Android devices. Each of the trackers can be customised, so if the commands aren't working I can take you through that and I'll show you the editing of the commands. OK, I'll select vehicle tracker for this particular application and then it will ask you for your admin phone. This is the phone that you're using, this is the actual phone number, um, so the tracker will command to use that as the administration phone. Again, I'll just use a simulated number and that says, do you want to actually tell the tracker that's your number? So I'll just use yes for that. And that's the initial configuration screen. You can see you get new time zone and it's admin phone. So basically when it's sending messages you'll get these prompts showing you the sending messages. So I'll now sh next thing I'll do is I'll show you some of the menu options. Um, that's the first one takes you to the back to your website showing all the different trackers and configuration that are available from the back to your website and you can see some of the things so if you can basically visit the website and, and buy additional hardware there right now I'll take you through the tracker option basically I've just added that shows you the tracker there and you can actually edit there if you want and you can add new trackers obviously there's the edit screen admin phone shows you the admin phone you configured if you want to change it if you press OK then it will send a command through to the tracker with the new admin phone time zone numeric time zone defaults to your phone's time zone and you can obviously edit there tracker mode basically you can have notifications when it moves outside a 200 meter real limit if you set a geo fence using Google Maps or you can have a speed limit where it goes over 100 kilometers an hour get your notifications Um, I s as I set the vehicle tracker, it shows additional things for the vehicle traffic specific commands. Again, these will only be un not they will be greyed out for devices that don't support it. So you can then control the engine, just turn the engine on and off. You can enable the shock sensor. I'll just show you what happens when you enable the shock sensor. So you tick it, it greys out, waiting for a response from the unit. When you get successful response from the unit, it tells you, well, in this case, the alarm's active. I'll turn it off again. And the alarm's disabled. Uh, check tracker, reset tracker. Basically, it just confirms that tracker's working, configure it. And reset tracker just again resets it. You only need those in, s in special cases. Right, the Back to You app tracker is what I'll show next, which basically is the software tracking 
um, so you can use multiple Android devices, each one running the Back to You app, and then you can track other apps, other Android devices using the app. It defaults to off, so obviously your privacy is important. So you can, can you have to opt in to allow tracking of your device, of your phone running the Back to You app. Once you have enabled it, then you can configure the password and the tracking phone. Password defaults to the normal things. Again, that's just default, but you can change that, obviously. And if the tracking phone is empty, then you can send an SMS message fix followed by the password from any other phone. It doesn't have to be running the Back to You app tracker. Um, if you put a specific phone number into this box, then only it will own the Back to You app tracker will only respond to that specific phone number. The Back to You app tracker also supports web tracking. So if you've got the tick on, then a web tracking response will also cause a SMS to be sent to your tracking phone if there's one entered. And I'll show you a few screens from the web tracking page later on in this video. OK, and the last option is tracker types. Well, basically just the list of tracker types and all the different ones. And it enables you to edit the commands. If you're having problems with a specific device, maybe they've changed the protocol that they use slightly, then you can edit the commands here. And I'll just show you that for the custom tracker. So you press edit. You can change the tracker name if you want to. And then you can see the list of tracker commands. So when I click on the choose command, we can then see the list of track commands. And there's it all the different co tracker commands that the tracker can the tracker app can use so that you can edit them if they have any problems. And I'll just show you editing the location command. So in the top box is the command that gets sent to the tracker. The percent %f is specific for parameters to each command. So if it's a single command, then it will have single percent %s. In this case, percent %s would be the password 123456 default. And it goes in front of the command. Now, obviously, if your tracker uses it in a different position, you can just move the percent %s somewhere else in the string. Or if the string, string to get the location is diff command to get the location is different, then you can edit that. And the command OK is just what you expect back if the command was successful from the tracker. It doesn't have to be the full response back. In this case, I'm just looking for the initial latitude on the command OK response, which would be a location. So um, you can configure that for all the different trackers if you're having a problem getting the response back. OK, so that's shown you the main features of the configuration. So I'll now show you what happens when you actually do have set up a a tracker and you want to actually use it. So the first thing to do is the get location. Configuration button will just take you back to the menu I've just been showing you. And clear track is if you've got lots of different points pumped back from your tracker then you can clear it. So there I'm getting a location and the device responds then you'd get a location like that. In this case it's showing you a blue dot which is where the location of the tracker is and then a an actual map marker which in this case is showing you it was a location by cell tower so the approximate the location is only approximate I'll just simulate another uh, track there you can see the green line which is basically showing you the track and again another cell tower approximate location and then I get another location and this time we've got a simulated r actual real track so it shows you the time and the speed and the battery level at the time uh, when you click on the marker. And I'll just clear that track. There you go, the track is now clear. And I'll show you setting up a geofence. Obviously you can move the map around, zoom in and out with two finger. But if you take two fingers around the map, then you get this rectangle which is showing you where the geofence, where you get notifications if the tracker moves outside this bound. So when you're happy with the position and size of the bounding box, then just stop, take your two fingers off, and then it will send the command to the tracker and show you that it's an active tracker. 
and I'll now show you what other modes you can got for movement. So you just click on the tracker mode. You can see it's on geofence at the moment. If I switch it to the movement, then that will give you a 200 p meter movement circle. Once the tracker responds, okay, then it's showed the movement fence is off and 200 meters is active. So I'll just scroll out to show you, zoom out to show you that the 200 meter circle is active. And if I go back into configuration and switch it to a different mode, and I'll switch it back to off. You could also switch speed limit on if you wanted speed limit notifications at that room out of the menu. And then it shows you the stopped at the movement location. So that basically shows you m much of the things. And I'll now show you what happens if you get a simulator and there's another move, a normal normal location and I'll this will now next will get a simulated alert from a tracker. So if as if it was moving. There you go. You so you get a movement alert notification and the circle the location has gone red which basically shows you that it was an alert location. And you can see on the map marker that it was say it's notified it as an alert type. So you know that that was a case where it's been notified because the tracker has been detecting a movement. Okay. I'll now switch to a different tracker type. I'll just show you the app tracker. And you can see in this mode that some of the en options are now greyed out. For example, you can't control the engine, time zones greyed out, the shocks are disabled. But you have got the alarm volume option. Now the alarm volume allows you to trigger the back device running your back the back to you app tracker to signal with a running the basically a ring. So it's on silent by default, but if you switch it to alarm loud, basically the device that you're tracking will now suddenly it will be ringing at full volume once you've got the notification back so that basically says that that device is now ringing if I configure it silent that basically has turned the ring off so it enables you to find if you've got another device running the app tracker then you can find out where it is and look for it you can also control that from the web page basically do the same thing to set the alarm on and it will say it will start ringing, set the alarm off and it will stop ringing. So you can basically as well as getting location by web page you can get it by um, uh, you can also start with it ringing so if you've lost your phone somewhere then you can so go to the web page and it will enable you to find your phone easier. Right that's it for the app and I'll just show you some of the w the examples of the web screens. So that's on the web page. If, if you go to the app tracker web page then you can see you can also scan in the location for the web page but you can also sign in using your Google account that your phone is running. Obviously it will only return locations if you've turned on the option in the app tracking to so as you can track your phone. Once you click sign in then it will go through the Google account sign in to show that you're not it's not actually using the password information that's all from Google and you can sign in with the Google account of, on your phone and then it will take you to the actual phone location when the phone responds this is, needs network track information obviously because it's using the Google cloud device notifications and it will show you the location of your phone and another couple of buttons so, so it showed the locate so you can refresh the location and the alarm which will basically trigger the alarm unit to sound on the phone okay so that's it for demonstrating the app you can go to the back to you website for to buy the actual trackers and to find out more information about this app